Hi, everyone. So you've seen this slide before, right? It's architecture, but it does tell a story of what can be achieved, what has been achieved across a very broad set of DeFi protocols and TradFi use cases and institutions. that are all powered by a combination of Chainlink oracles and blockchains in their smart contracts. And it works because it's highly reliable. Our public Oracle network is decentralized, and the oracles get together and coordinate via a Byzantine fault-tolerant protocol called OCR. Plus, we've built up very solid experience on how to release reliably and how to enable our NOPs to operate reliably. It works because it's secure. As you saw from Gondo earlier today, Chainlink oracles have published over 15 billion messages to public blockchains and have enabled over 15, 16 actually, trillion dollars of value on public permissionless blockchains. That's amazing. And it works because it's verifiable. So much of our configuration is open on public blockchains and the source code is available for public inspection. But so far we've had one big limitation. These use cases have been focused around things that we saw at Chainlink are really important. We've not made it easy to put all this power in your hands, and that's now going to change. So I wanted to share what we've been cooking up so that all of that power can be applied to your use case, however you want it. But let's take a step back to figure out how to do this. So as you know, blockchains use cryptography to create an immutable write-only ledger, and then numerous nodes that synchronize in a decentralized manner in order to produce consensus. And that consensus across decentralized operators is what then gives blockchains their amazing properties, like an immutable um, known good history. The smart contracts then give you a programming model on top of that distributed ledger. Right? built on a well-defined state machine and predictable execution, which is again founded on consensus. And then you can take that consensus for granted when you're writing the smart contract code. Right? You don't think about all of the nodes that are running independently because you're writing against the virtual machine. And in that virtual machine, you know that whatever you write will be executed reliably, securely, and verifiably. But all this state and all these interactions are internal to that chain by design, right? By design, they're living in their own world. And we know that while it works great inside of that one world, there are other worlds out there. And each one has its own contracts and each one has its own ecosystem. And the consensus models vary a little bit across some of them. And the assets and the contracts on those chains vary. And in fact, there's a very important ecosystem, as we know, outside of any blockchain, right? There's a lot of data out there that's really, really important. We've been serving that data for years. And it's often available behind Web2 APIs. And some of that data, some of that information is available only behind messages, such as the SWIFT messages that coordinate a lot of the traditional finance um, systems and banks and institutions. And of course, there's a huge array of Web2 systems that are providing not just data, but also interactions that power the traditional financial world. And so, if we want to pull all of that together, we need to pull in, we need to involve oracles, if we want to do it in a reliable, verifiable manner. We need, in fact, decentralized oracle networks, as we know. And these oracles will need to connect with these various APIs and the messaging systems and the Web2 systems. And sometimes they need to call them multiple times and aggregate the data in some way. And sometimes they need to call them only once because it might be expensive to call or because they might have side effects like creating a resource. And sometimes you need to listen for calls or events that happen and react once you know that all those things happen. And consensus has to be thought of a little bit differently in each one of these interactions, right? So 
After they connect, you also need to perform often some custom logic and use consensus to make sure that that logic has uh, worked reliably and securely. And the oracles will need to read and write to the various chains, each with their own consensus model. So we see there's a lot of variation in how you need to actually deploy consensus or work with consensus in order to get the properties that you expect. And again, what are those properties? First, reliability, that what we say will happen will indeed happen. Second, security, that nobody get in, can get in the way of that. And third, verifiability, knowing with certainty that what should have happened did indeed happen. So that's, of course, what the oracles, working with the various blockchains and their smart contracts, are going to need to achieve by the various forms of the consensus. And they'll need to work together in this careful choreography to get just the right connections, just the right compute, just the right blockchain interactions with the appropriate consensus mechanisms in each one of these things in order to get you reliable, secure, and verifiable execution. OK. What do we call this? Consensus computing. This is an age of consensus computing, right? There's consensus of various types all across these things. And we ask, how do you program Oracle networks and smart contracts to achieve all of that consensus and get you those properties that we just talked about? And that's the key to being efficient and effective in this world. Now, we've worked hard for years to figure that out, to understand how to achieve it and adding more and more use cases. And today, I'm going to talk to you more about making it programmable. To, put, to make it really easy to achieve any use case, your use case, very, very quickly. So as you know, as you heard from Sergey, we've been building the Chainlink runtime environment, the CRE. It's a runtime for DOMS, a runtime for decentralized Oracle networks. And it automatically gives you just the right consensus model for your particular use case. Now, just like any good runtime, it completely abstracts away all the hard bits. You don't have to think about them at all. In other words, it gives you a simple programming model for DONS. Let's visualize how it works. So let's say you have a particular use case. You have some data that sits behind some APIs. You need to do pull that data, do some compute, write it on blockchain C. So what do you need to do in order to make that happen with those properties? You create a workflow which simply says, get some data, do some compute, write it to chain. That's all you need to do. Just tell us what it is that you want these oracles to do. And the workflow done will load your workflow and start to execute it. It first communicates with a connect done to call the API using the calling pattern that you requested. And then it commu communicates with a compute done in order to do the custom code that you asked to do, say, transforming the data or extracting the data. Now, these DONs could be a logical overlay over exactly the same nodes, or they can be completely separate DONs that communicate with each other. And you don't need to worry about any of that. And finally, you get a chain writer DON that has just the right RPC and the logic to write to chain C. And that's a lot of orchestration, a lot of cryptography, a lot of synchronization to achieve the consensus properties appropriate for each one of these steps in your workflow. But your workflow can be super simple. Now, we call each one of these building blocks a capability. So what you're doing is orchestrating these capabilities. And that capability, each capability, is executed on a DON that has exactly the right properties in order to achieve that particular capability. So as you see, what we've done is we've broken it up into units called capabilities, building blocks, that you can then assemble through simple code. Now, your workflow is written in code. It can be Go. It can be TypeScript. We compile it down to WASM. And that WASM is then what's actually executed on the appropriate nodes. So in your code, you simply invoke the capabilities. We'll see an example of that in just a second. And the execution, the coordination of the DONs 
for each one of the capabilities that you called, and then combining them with a consensus overlay, that's what the Chainlink runtime environment provides you, the CRE. Now, to accomplish this, we did need to re-architect in a significant way the Chainlink platform. And we needed to break it down into these capabilities. And those capabilities are those building blocks. Let's walk through them. So the foundation is a unified interface for interacting with blockchains, where the specifics of each chain are indeed taken into account, the consensus model, the RPCs, and so on. But in the end, they're surfaced as common interfaces for all the rest of the platform, a chain reader and a chain writer. Now, you can have a DAWN in the end for Solana. You can have a DAWN for Ethereum and so on. And these DAWNs will communicate and will be very, very simple for you to interact with any chain that way. So the programming for any such DAWN is exactly the same. Now, reading and writing to these chains is just some of the capabilities. We also have, of course, compute to actually run your code. We have an outbound API where you can call any API out there. There's a key value store to provide you permanent persistence as much as you need in the middle of your flow. There will be an event store to have an immutable write-only history of just the information that you want to write. And very importantly, a policy engine that allows you to, de to define policies in that can be uh, instantiated and can be checked against without having to write the same custom code over and over again. So these are configurable policies. And again, remember, every one of these capabilities is mapped to a DON that has the, cap the functionality to provide that particular capability. Now, there's two kinds of capabilities. There's capabilities that you execute inside of your workflow, and there's capabilities that trigger your workflow. So for example, inbound API calls can trigger a workflow, or receiving a message or an event can trigger a workflow, or you can run these workflows on schedule. So these are all the capabilities. Uh, and there will be more over time, and eventually you'll be able to write capabilities yourself. OK. Now, the CRE is what pulls all of this stuff together. It executes the workflows whenever the, the triggers fire. And then it uses dawn-to-dawn -dawn communications so that these dawns can, in fact, be coordinated across each other. Let's look at an example of exactly this kind of flow, this time in TypeScript. It's just a lot easier to read. And in this case, this example will provide net asset value, or NAV, to a tokenized asset on a chain. So let's actually walk through this. At the beginning, you can read in your config, right? This seems trivial, but it's really important because it means you can reuse your workflow over and over again simply by changing the config. And you have easy access to it right inside of your code. Now, the first step when this is triggered is to get the nav from the API. You see that. Inside of the connect DON, we include a little bit of custom code to extract the API from the response of that API call. And we're reaching consensus on the median in this case. All of this is changeable through your code. Now, just like any code, you can easily log anything that you want. And you don't have to think about the fact that it's running on numerous nodes across various DONs. You just log it, and it'll be produced on the observability stack on the other side. And finally, you can see how easy it is to write the chain. Which chain? Whichever chain was inside of your config. So again, you can just reuse these flows across lots of chains. And finally, we register this particular workflow to run on a regular schedule, which you can configure through your configuration. Now, that's all it takes for the CRE to coordinate swarms of Chainlink nodes and blockchain nodes to reach consensus and execute things reliably, securely, and verifiably. As you've come to expect from Chainlink, except now it's your use case. Now let's look at another example. We saw this earlier. Sig Sergey uh, explained the context of this DVP interaction across lots of institutions and swift messages and so on. DVP, as you know, is a uh, common uh, process inside of traditional finance. Uh, you can have the payment, the P part of the DVP, for example, happen off-chain while the delivery is happening on-chain and so on. And you end up orchestrating a lot of things and a lot of messages. 
But with a CRE, it's just more of the same steps that you saw. In this particular case, this is a TypeScript version of the Golang we're actually using. And I'm not going to walk you through all of this. It's just lots and lots of steps like this. And in fact, there's lots of workflows that institute this. But let's look at a couple of pieces of this thing. One is we're using a key value store in order to map accounts from their off-chain Swift message equivalents to their on-chain um, identities. And we're using the policy engine explicitly to check whether these particular things are compliant, for example, against some attestations. So that's what it looks like. It's very, very simple in the end, and a lot of stuff that happens underneath that. How do you see what that stuff is? Well, in fact, here is a UI of an application that we built recently, and we demoed at Cybos last week. What you're seeing inside here is the individual events that are happening in various places, off-chain, on-chain, all brought to you through this interactive UI that makes it really, really simple to figure out what, in fact, is going on. You don't see lots of nodes. You just actually see the functional events that are happening. And of course, you can add your own events to this thing. So the platform is real. It's being developed as we speak. And we're excited to take it to production um, uh, in order to be applied to use cases like the Swift DVP one. And here's a preview of a web console that you'll have that allows you to, I remember that was a workflow manager in that architecture diagram. This allows you to actually launch workflows, see which ones are working, understand their status, and also get notified of any problems that have happened so you can get in there and debug them. So what's the status of all of this good stuff? Well, first, we're really dogfooding it ourselves. We're making sure that it'll be ready and easy to use by first starting ourselves. And we're doing that by putting this in the hands of our uh, engineers that are customer facing, not our product engineers. The product engineers are building the uh, developer experience, and they're building extra capabilities. But it's the customer facing engineers that are sort of our first line of give it to someone else and see whether this thing is actually working for them. Can they be successful? So we're dogfooding it first. Now, the architecture is already starting to accelerate us. So for example, having one place of integration, chain reader and chain writer, allows all of our functionality to immediately be available on those chains. And in fact, the, the configuration is much easier because the DONs are relatively static, and you only compose across them. Now, we're using it ourselves, as I mentioned, uh, with um, other institutions just like Swift uh, in order to enable real-world use cases. And it's a really good place for TradFi and DeFi to come together. It's the same platform, and each side will add in their use cases and will stretch what the platform can do, and the other side will be able to, to uh, benefit from that. So I'm really excited that this is literally a place where they come together. And if you want to sign up for early access, you saw this QR code before. So let us know what your use case might be, and um, we'll get you some early access to this. Thank you very much. <laughs>